Without a doubt, this is the single most important engine in Ferrari history and brought the company to its current reputation. It was meant to be a race engine, but served well as a core road car engine for most of the models for over 40 years, with a large scale of versions, from 1.5 litre up to nearly 5 litres. It also introduced one of the most typical combinations in the automotive world, a V12 Ferrari. <laughs> Enzo Ferrari was a skilled and quite successful racing driver, but he was more into managing a racing team. His experience started at Alfa Romeo, but after World War II, he pursued his dream of his own racing team, later known as Scuderia Ferrari. Ferrari was amazed by Alfa's mighty supercharged straight eight, designed by Gioacchino Colombo, easily making over 350 horsepower. Enzo would not hesitate to quickly approach Colombo. Over his lifetime, he worked for various brands like Alfa Romeo, Bugatti, Maserati and even MV Agusta. Enzo believed that a V12 was the way to go and wanted it in his cars. The engine was also the reason why Ferrari managed to keep his racing team alive as he later realized that they also need to sell cars to generate income. Colombo was not on his own. Development was assisted by Luigi Bazzi, Aurelio Lampredi and the one and only Giuseppe Busso. They would not always agree with Colombo's suggestions, but it was done in Colombo's way anyway. Right from the beginning, it was meant to be a race engine, hence manufactured out of lightweight alloys such as aluminum. The displacement divided by 12 was the model name for most of the Colombo powered automobiles including the first Ferrari ever, the 1.5-litre 1947 125S. Thanks to the SOHC design, three Weber carburetors and a compression ratio of 7.5 to 1, it made 118 horsepower at 6,800 rpm and brought home several victories right away. By the end of the 1940s, it was meant for the F1 too, paired with a root supercharger. However, its power output was mediocre and the 125 F1 was not really competent despite its low weight. This is why Ferrari chose Lampredi's larger, naturally aspirated V12 in 1951. In 1950, Colombo left Ferrari for an Alfa Romeo job. His engine was not particularly impressive in Formula 1, but it went on to become a core item of all upcoming production models in the near future, as the company was not letting it go with its design. Vittorio Jano took over the development, as Ferrari understood the company needs to sell road cars to finance his racing team dream. The 125S was only sold in two examples, but the portfolio would quickly grow and sell well. On top of the conventional design of an aluminum architecture and the 60 degree bang angle, there were some rather interesting quirks. Copper firings were used to seal the combustion chambers, valves were returned by hairpin springs like the BRMV16, and the press fit cast iron liners were spaced 90mm apart. As the 125's engine had a 55mm bore, it clearly shows that engineers were thinking forward and preparing the base design for much larger cylinders. There were many development stages of the Colombo, and an early one is known as the short block, 58.8mm short stroke variant. The earliest models carried the names 166, 195 and 212, suggesting their single cylinder volume thanks to the 60, 65 and 68mm bore diameters. They range from 105 to 166 horsepower, but the way it stuck a bit longer was the 250. Using a 73mm bore, the engine displacement settled just under 3000cc, making it suitable for various racing categories. It was the sweet spot, easily reaching over 200 horsepower, with race cars closer to 300. <laughs> 
Introducing the 250 Testarossa. The 1953 engine block was used, but it incorporated many upgrades. For the first time, helical springs were implemented, saving space for studio heads and also using four studs per cylinder rather than just three. The conventional head gasket was applied and spark plugs were relocated to the outside between the exhaust pipes. Conrods were now of steel billet instead of forged steel, making them more high RPM resistant. Thicker crank bearings were fitted, enlarged from 55 to 60 mm, and cam covers were now red, hence the name Testarossa. Dry sum was used as well, and running six twin barrel Webers, Ferrari was proud of this 100 horsepower per litre engine. to continued racing in the more aerodynamic model, screaming all the way up to 7500 rpm. These mods were later placed also in 250 GT SWB and Series 2 Pinit Farina models. aware of the 250 Europa, which used a 68 by 68 bore stroke engine made by Lampredi. In fact, alongside the Colombo V12, various other V and flat 12 cylinders were used during its time, dubbed the 400. Marking its 4 litre displacement rather than a single cylinder volume, the 1959 400 Super America was the first America model built with the Colombo after Lampredi's powered versions. It produced up to 340 horsepower at 7000 rpm, just about the same as its 5 litre Lampredi predecessor. The bores of the 400 were 77 mm wide and its stroke came up to 71 mm. In 1964, a unique Colombo engine was made with a 108 mm bore spacing and the same cylinder dimensions as the Lampredi V12, 88 by 68 mm. Now it was a massive 5 litre engine producing up to 400 horsepower with 6 Webers and 414 cc per cylinder. The motor was placed inside a 500 superfast capable of 280 km per hour. The last 58.8mm stroke engine was the Tipo 213. It was the 275 model name using the 77mm bore of the 400 engine on the short block variant. It put out about 240 to 250 horsepower despite its advertised 280 horsepower output or about 25 horsepower more with a factory 6 Weber option. This was also the time when in 1964 a redesigned long block was used. Having wider bore spacing by 4mm, the new 94mm spaced bore allowed for even larger displacement in the future. As the evolution of the 400 Super America engine, a 4 litre 330 Tipo 209 was the first one to adopt the new architecture and made 300 horsepower at 6600 rpm. A 330 LMB was essentially a reworked 250 GTO with a 390 horsepower 4 litre. The hottest 330 engine was placed inside the Ferrari P with up to 450 horsepower at 8000 rpm. In 1966, the 275 underwent a major revision. It was called the 275 GTB-4, indicating four camshafts together, still acting on 24 valves in total. Camshafts were now perpendicular to the valves, which also received a narrower 54-degree valve angle down from 57, making heads 
a bit more compact. The Tipo 226 supposedly made 300 horsepower out of its 3.3 litre engine displacement and with a dry sum system it would take up to 16 litres of oil. The new 365 engine having an 81mm bore also benefited from the large block. It was in production for over 10 years until 1976, accommodating a dry sum system and the double overhead cam for the GTB-4 Daytona variant. The twin cam system gave it about 30 additional horsepower and made the lightweight Daytona a very quick grand tourer. i and 412i, using 81mm by 78mm cylinders, initially a 4.8 litre and later enlarged by 1mm in bore width, two 4.9 litre were made for heavier and larger Ferraris. The carbureted version had 340 horsepower, but later the Bosch Cagetronic fuel injection was installed. The power went down to 310 horsepower, but emissions were now US friendly. The 412i rolled down the factory up until 1988, which concluded the 41-year history of the remarkable Colombo engine. As a race engine and road car power plant, it certainly was the most critical engine for the Ferrari brand ever. Today it is one piece of an expensive engine and hard to come by. However, GTO Engineering makes some parts in-house and applies modern technologies to the original design. Thank you.